Hello, this is Todd Luck, and recently I've gotten a few requests for videos uh, related to Tarzan, and I'll be doing the movie requests uh, in the next few weeks, but right now I wanted to do the request that asked me what my Tarzan comic book reading recommendations were, and the answer is most of them. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff that's been put out of Tarzan, uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cover about 50 years worth of stuff, which is actually not as much as you would think since Tarzan w hasn't been published for a lot of that time. But it's still a lot so, for one video, so we're going to go rapid fire, so let's get started. And by the way, everything I'm about to talk about is listed in the description below, so you don't have to take notes if you don't want to. So we're gonna start a little bit further than 50 years ago with my favorite overall Tarzan creator, Russ Manning. Uh, Manning is just a tremendous talent. I love his storytelling. I love his line work and design. He also writes a lot of his stuff and his stories are just really great action adventure stories that children and adults can enjoy to this day. And I've never seen a writer channel Burroughs more perfectly than Russ Manning can. And so Russ Manning's work from the 60s and 70s has been collected in numerous trade paperbacks and this is one of them. This is Tarzan in the Land at Time for God, an original tale that he wrote and drew. His adaptions are also in trade paperback. You're talking Tarzan of the Apes, Tarzan and the Jewels of Opar, and Tarzan the Untamed. Manning's comic book work is collected into hardcovers, Tarzan the Russ Manning Years, and Korak, Son of Tarzan Archives, one and two. Manning had a really great run on the newspaper strips, and that's collected in four volumes, the Tarzan, the complete Russ Manning newspaper strips, and again, four volumes of that, but you can also read them for free on Edgar Rice Burroughs' website. So I'll link in the description below. That's a real treasure trove. They've even got unpublished Russ Manning stories on there. It's awesome. And so now let's go to the 70s with the DC era of Tarzan comics by Joe Kubert. And these comics, um, the artwork, you know, by Joe Kubert's a little rougher, but I think his layouts are great. And I think the art style just really works with Tarzan. So you may notice the high issue number there. Uh, it actually begins with issue 207. They took over the numbering from the previous publisher, which was something you know you did back in the day. And then it ends with Tarzan 258, which I actually do own that issue. And these two giant treasury editions behind me are part of that run. They reprint Tarzan of the Apes and The Return of Tarzan. Uh, in these giant format. Uh, there's some pages missing, but it's nothing noticeable when you're reading it. And it's got some cool like bonus features like, you know, how to draw Tarzan by Joe Kubert and stuff like that. Um, the series actually did have a lot of adaptions. They also did Tarzan the Untamed, Tarzan and the Lion Men, and all three stories that were in Tarzan and the Castaways. Plus, you know, of course, tons of original stories that were really good. So three hard covers of this run do exist, but they only cover the issues that Joe Kubert drew himself. He was also editor and writer on the stuff that he didn't draw, and you can definitely see his influence. I mean, he is the creative mastermind of Tarzan all the way through the series, even when he's not drawing it. So definitely all the series is worth getting, but you know, again, you can get the stuff he drew himself in, in three hard covers. And the first hard cover is actually on Comixology Unlimited. If you already have a subscription for that, which is very cheap, you can just go ahead and read that and it's wonderful stuff. And so now we're going to the 80s with Tarzan by Marvel Comics. So I only unfortunately have one issue of this series but what I can tell you is that it is good. It adapts Tarzan and the Jewels of Opar, and it is by Roy Thomas and John Bashima, the creative team that gave us the greatest Conan run ever, and they are well suited for this. So my recommendation here, the stuff I can actually vouch for, is that this creative team did the first 14 issues, the first 11 issues are a epic adaption of Jewels of Opar, 
And then the last few issues are an adaption of Jungle Tales of Tarzan. Um, the rest of it may be very good, you know, the issues after that, but I can definitely tell you that the first 14 issues are probably outstanding. And so next we go to the 90s, and this kind of puts us into the what I would consider to be the modern era of comic books. And so we'll see a shift from ongoing series by set creative teams to a series of mini series by rotating creative teams. And another big difference is I actually own most of the comics that have been published in the last 30 years. So we'll start with Malibu Comics Tarzan. And I've already reviewed these individually, so we're just gonna go rapid fire here. So this is Tarzan the Warrior by Mark Wheatley. He did the writing, Neil Vokes did the art, great stuff. Uh, Tarzan, Love, Lies, and the Lost City. This is uh, Tarzan and Lav Opar, you know, he, Tarzan goes to Opar. And we have Tarzan the Beckoning by Thomas Yeats. This is a real magnum opus by Thomas Yeats and who is my favorite modern Tarzan artist, uh, at least as far as the comic books go. He's just tremendous, and I really recommend getting it in trade paperback because there's a lot of additional things that they did to it and a lot of things that were wrong with the miniseries that they corrected, and so this is the definitive version of one of the best Tarzan stories you're ever gonna read. Tarzan and the Rivers of Blood was originally going to be uh, published by Malibu, but ended up being published by Dark Horse instead. And so I do recommend it, even though it's only four issues and was never completed. Uh, it's by Igor Cordy, and uh, that's Tarzan, Rivers of Blood, and there's a companion one-shot called Tarzan Telemugambi. Speaking of Dark Horse, they hit the ground running when they got it in the 90s. And so this is Tarzan, The Lost Adventure. This is a story that wasn't completed by Edgar Rice Burroughs, so they took it and had Joe Lansdale finish it, and it's got Thomas Yeats art, which is freaking awesome, and it was originally published in four volumes, and it has really neat extras in the back, like this John Carter comic strip from way back in the day. And so then they did the excellent Tarzan versus Predator at the Earth's Core, written by the Fantastic Walt Simonson with art by Lee Weeks. And this was my first Tarzan comic, yay! And so this led into an ongoing series with self-contained plot lines. And so that started out with Tarzan's Jungle Fury uh, from issue one to six. And basically Tarzan comes back from Barsoom and he's ca carried something with him that starts infecting uh, things in the jungle. There's also a lost city. It's really, really cool stuff. And so issue seven through 10 is Tarzan Legion of Hate, which follows up on Tarzan the Magnificent, complete with mind control and warrior women, and they throw Nazis into the mix. It's really cool stuff. And it ends with a really strong plot line that ran from issue 17 to 20, Tarzan versus the Moon Men. This is following up on Edgar Rice Burroughs' classic Moon Trilogy, and the Wazari from the future go back in time to get Tarzan to help them fight the Moon Men, and it's epic. Uh, written by Tim Truman, art by Thomas Yeats, awesome stuff. And speaking of Tarzan crossing over into other Burroughs' properties, this is Tarzan, Carson of Venus, with artwork by the fantastic Igor Cordy, great miniseries. Thomas Yeats did a great adaption of The Return of Tarzan. It's only three issues. It starts when he arrives back in Africa, which is basically the best part of the novel. I think it works really well, and I, gosh, I love this cover. Thomas Yeats also did a series of short stories set in Pellucidar, the prehistoric world at the Earth's core, that was in Dark Horse Presents number 143, definitely worth picking up. And so Dark Horse stopped publishing regular Tarzan comics with Tarzan and the Rivers of Blood number four in the year 2000, but they have put some short stories in Dark Horse Presents, a uh, serialized story called The Once and Future Tarzan, and the first three of those, illustrated by Thomas Sheets, is collected in this one shot, which I do recommend. It's just got gorgeous, gorgeous Thomas Sheets art. You just can't go wrong here. And so a couple of things that I haven't read, 
but or probably pretty good it would be Jungle Tales of Tarzan, a graphic novel that Dark Horse put out a few years ago. It's got different creative teams adapting, you know, each of the Jungle Tales from the novel. And then there's also Tarzan on the Planet of the Apes. And it just looks like it has really tr gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. So I'm probably going to pick that up at some point. And so I would be remiss if I didn't mention Dynamite did a series called Lord of the Jungle. Um, it was unlicensed, and for story reasons, I don't really consider it Tarzan and can't really recommend it, but it is available on Comixology Unlimited. There's Lord of the Jungle, then Lords of Mars, where he crosses over with John Carter. I also didn't care for that, but they did one last miniseries called Lords of the Jungle featuring Tarzan and Sheena, and by then, I think they were probably licensed, and this is by a different writer, and I actually had fun with this one. I would c consider it silly, benign fun. It's got leopard men in it. I actually enjoyed it. If you do pick this one up, I definitely recommend getting the regular painted covers. They are gorgeous. And if I can go beyond just comic books and talk about online comic strips, EdgarRiceBurrows.com has a fantastic subscription service with new material that they're producing based on the Burroughs novels and there are four strips that are related to Tarzan and that's Tarzan of the Apes which is an adaption of the novels by Roy Thomas starting with Tarzan of the Apes and it's beautiful I love it and there are new adventures of Tarzan written by Roy Thomas and I felt like these got really good once we get into the current plot line Return to Paladon and then there's Tarzan twins, and this is Tarzan's cousins that are lost in the jungle. This is based on the Burroughs book for younger readers. But what they do is they add in subplots with Tarzan and Jane that are quite good. It's a little over the top, but I really enjoy the strip. And then there's Korak the Killer, which is, of course, Tarzan's son, and it has an original Lost City and Nazis, and it's just really good stuff. And so that's it. That's all my Tarzan reading recommendations for comics. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did I miss anything you liked? Did I talk about anything you loved? Like and subscribe for more videos. And until next time. See ya.